All right, it is October 8th for regional cuisine. And this week's recipe that we're doing that was posted earlier for you guys on your Google Classroom is the pumpkin bread by Delish, okay? Um, so this starts out with the recipe for the first steps of um, preheating the oven. So I already have the oven on at 350 degrees, right? I've had that on for a good 20 minutes or so to get nice and hot. So that way when I'm done mixing this bread, get it in the pan, it can go straight into the oven, okay? This has a bake time of about 50 minutes or so. Um, so I'll be checking that throughout. So I will post a pic for you guys later of what the bread looks like so you'll be able to see it because um, it'll probably get eaten pretty quickly around here, okay? So one of the first things that we need to do is get our pan set, right? So the recipe calls for an eight by four loaf pan. So this is your loaf pan, right? Nice rectangular shape, not super big. It's not the large loaf pan. If I doubled the recipe, I could use the larger size loaf pan. But for this one here, I'm going to use the eight by four. And then I have a piece of parchment paper, okay? The parchment paper comes on a roll, just like aluminum foil does. Don't confuse this with wax paper, right? Parchment paper is meant for baking. You can put this on a cookie sheet to bake cookies without having to wash your pans. Um, wax paper will burn in the oven, so do not use wax paper. If you don't have parchment, you can just grease the pan without it. This is just gonna make it easier to get this out of the pan afterwards. So what I did is I cut this to the width, right? So it's a little bit longer piece going this way. So I can push this down inside. Right, and make a little cavity. So this paper is gonna stick up. So when this bread is done, I'm gonna let it cool in the pan for a few minutes, and then I'm gonna be able to just grab these little parchment paper sides and pull the bread out, right? So that way it doesn't stick or break. So I'm gonna use a little bit of non-stick spray, right? Pam, store brand, whatever you have, right? This is just cooking spray. And so I've got my pan all set and that's ready to go. So I've got my parchment, I've got my spray in there. You can use a little bit of melted butter or softened butter or a little bit of um, shortening, like a Crisco, okay, in there as well. So this recipe is going to be for a quick bread, right? Like I said, this could also be done in muffin pans, right, with the muffin papers, um, or it can be done as a loaf. So this is going to have dry ingredients in one bowl, wet ingredients in the other bowl. So I've got here just a little glass bowl and my whisk, right? And I'm going to measure out my dry ingredients first, okay? So I've just got some plain all-purpose flour, and I'm going to grab a knife here for measuring. I'm gonna do two cups of all-purpose flour. Now I don't wanna pack that in, right? So remember, we talked about this measurements yesterday, is that I wanna measure it full, and then use my knife to scrape off the excess, okay? So I wanna have a level cup of flour. I don't want to have overflowing, okay? You don't need to pack the flour in. You just want to make sure that that cup is nice and full, all right? So I'm just going to take out that excess. And I have my two cups of flour, all right? So just all-purpose flour, all right? Now I'm going to do a teaspoon of cinnamon. And you'll see here that I've got a whisk, right, for this bowl. I want to take and be able to keep this flour and my spices nice and well blended and light. Okay. So I'm going to take my cinnamon and do one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Okay. Now remember, same thing with your spices, right? You wanna have it nice and level. Okay, so you can use a knife, you can use your finger and just level that off. So this is gonna give it really nice aroma. That fall flavors, right? Then I want a teaspoon of baking soda, okay? So baking soda and baking powder are not the same thing, okay? So be mindful of that. So baking soda, one teaspoon. Now inside the box, it's got a little flap, which works great for leveling that off, okay? So this is gonna help us give us some puff. So now I wanna do a half a teaspoon of baking powder. Now baking soda will have an instant quick reaction so as I froth this up, the batter will get a little fluffier. Baking powder is what we call double acting, right? It's right on the label, it'll tell you double acting. So this has an instant reaction when it comes in contact with the wet, but it'll give you a second rise, a little puff to your bread when it's in the oven from the heat. So same thing, this has a little lip on the can, and this is a half a teaspoon of the baking powder. So this will give us our rise when this is in the oven. I'm gonna do a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. 
teaspoon there. Quarter teaspoon, so much smaller, of the ground ginger. Now, ground ginger is a much stronger ingredient, right? So we had a whole teaspoon of cinnamon and only a quarter teaspoon of the ginger. So make sure you're following those steps really well so you're not confusing those spices, right? So same thing, level it off. So you're only getting a flush level measurement. So we've got the quarter teaspoon of ground ginger. And then I'm going to do a quarter teaspoon of the ground nutmeg. Okay, so same thing, a nice level measurement. Don't want it to be too strong because nutmeg and ginger and spices like that will tend to overpower your baked goods if it's too much. Okay, so now I've got here my flour and I've got all my spices, my cinnamon, ginger, my nutmeg. I've got the baking soda and the baking powder and I'm just using a whisk just to blend this all together. Okay. So all the dry ingredients are in one bowl and then I'm gonna switch to a bigger bowl in just a second. Okay, so you can see all nice and blended. It already smells like fall in a bowl, right? So I'm gonna switch to a larger bowl here with another whisk for my wet ingredients, okay? So the wet ingredients are gonna start off with one stick of butter, right? And this is an unsalted butter. Um, this has already been melted. I just did it in a glass dish in the microwave, so make sure it's glass or plastic, something that's microwave safe, no metal. Okay, you can do it in a metal pan on the stove, but just chop up the stick of butter, melt it. And I've had this sitting on top of the preheated oven to stay nice and melted. So we get going here today. Okay. Now, remember we talked about yesterday in class that sugar is considered a wet ingredient. So sugar is going to be my next item to go into the bowl. Okay. And it is wet ingredient because when it comes in contact with heat, it melts. So it does become liquid. So for sugar, it's one and a quarter cups. So I'm going to take my one cup measure for my flour here. Screen. All right. So we've got our sugar here. And we said same thing. You want a nice level measurement. So just using that butter knife. Okay. So we're going to add that into our melted butter. And then I need a quarter cup. So when you see one, one slash four, so that's one full cup plus the quarter cup. Okay. So don't miss that quarter cup because you won't have enough sugar for your recipe. So same thing, level that off. Okay. And I'm just going to give this a quick stir. We get them combined. All right. Nice and blended. Now, our other wet ingredients are going to be, one is pumpkin, right? And this is just a canned pumpkin puree. This time of year, you'll find pumpkins everywhere, um, different local farms and the grocery stores. If you wanted to make cook down and make your own pumpkin puree, you want to look for what's called a sugar pumpkin. Not the big, giant ones that you carve faces into for Halloween. You want to look for those little, tiny, darker skin color sugar pumpkins instead. All right. And those um, are your baking pumpkins. So if you wanted to do this, you could just cut the pumpkin into some chunks, throw it on a pan in the oven, bake it down, and get a nice pumpkin puree. So I'm going to do one cup of pumpkin. Now, pumpkin is going to make this bread really nice and moist, right? It's going to help keep it soft, give it lots of flavor, and a really pretty color. Because you look at that canned pumpkin, right? Fill this up nice and full, make sure that it's level. So little small spouches like this really come in handy for these kind of tasks. And I'm going to add that into my melted butter and sugar mixture. And quick bread is exactly what it is. It, it probably takes longer to get out all the ingredients like I did earlier today than it does to um, actually mix this all together. Okay. So we've got our pumpkin puree. Just gonna blend that in. So you can start to see that really pretty color, right? Definitely a fall shade. And then our next thing is gonna be some sour cream. So I'm gonna need a quarter cup of sour cream. All right, so just a regular plain sour cream, like you would use for your tacos and things. 
This is also gonna help keep this bread nice and tender, moisture, but it's also gonna add a little bit of fat to it too. Even if it's a low fat sour cream. Um, you'll see in a lot of quick bread recipes, things like sour cream and yogurt, because it'll help make a nice texture, right? So a quarter cup of the sour cream. Scrape that into our bowl. There you go. And then we're going to need two large eggs. So the color doesn't matter if you have farm fresh eggs, if you've got um, white brown, that doesn't matter, right? You're going to get blended in with the baking anyways. So most people tend to crack the egg on the bowl, right? What happens is when you do that, the shells push in, and that's how your yolks usually break. So instead, tap it on the counter and then crack it in, okay? Now, if you're really bad at this, crack your eggs into a separate bowl, make sure you don't have shells, and then pour it in, okay? Convenience today, we're just gonna mix that in. So now I wanna break up those eggs really well. Mix in that sour cream too. And you see this mixture starting to get a lot looser. It smells really good. Get that nice and smooth. Then our last wet ingredient is going to be some vanilla extract. So I'm gonna need a teaspoon of vanilla. Same thing, and that's for flavor, that's for aroma. Okay, so got the vanilla, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, the ginger, the pumpkin, right? You've got all these flavors happening in one bowl. Okay. So now I'm gonna gradually add in my dry ingredients into the wet. So I'm gonna take my separate bowl here. I'm going to add in a little bit of a dry, about a quarter of them at a time. Now the recipe says that you can do this on a machine or the hand blender. Honestly, this is such a small batch recipe. You can quickly do this by hand with a whisk or a good wooden spoon. Okay. I do like a whisk because it does tend to break up the lumps flour may have so a little more of the flour spice mixture right don't forget this also has our baking soda and baking powder and you want to do this slowly right you'll see i'm scraping down the sides of that bowl so i like using clear bowls for the demos right so that way you can see things getting mixed in and you can see if you're missing anything as you're blending so you don't want a big lump of flour somewhere in the middle of your bread a little bit more of our flour mixture. Like I said, don't do this too fast, otherwise you're gonna end up wearing it. So those quick bread recipes will often call for the separation of the wet and the dry. Soon as you put these two together though, this needs to go into a pan quickly because those baking soda, baking powder are already gonna start to have a chemical reaction to the moisture. So they will already start to rise. So if I mix this batter up and I don't put this in the oven for, you know, an hour or so, I might not get as thick of a bread because it's going to lose some volume as it sits, right? We don't want that to happen. So we do just want to get it mixed. Anytime you're doing any kind of muffin or quick bread recipe, always get them in the oven. And that's why you preheat your oven, right? So that way it's ready to go and I'm not waiting to put this into a hot oven. Same thing, I don't want to put this into a cold oven either because then it won't rise properly. It might rise slowly and then get a weird hump in the middle of the bread. We don't want that, okay? So that is our pumpkin bread mixture, okay? So that is gonna go into the loaf pan that we already have, right? So when we started off in the beginning, right? We had our loaf pan with our parchment. I'm up the side so it'll be easy to get this out after little bit of cooking spray, okay? And then I'm gonna take and put this into the pan and fill it up nice. Now, the one thing it says in this recipe as well is that it's optional at the end to add a cinnamon sugar. 
why wouldn't you, right? So we're gonna do that too. All right, I'm gonna switch to my big spatula. And baking does dirty a lot of dishes, but it's worth it, right? So here is the pan. Like I said, it's all greased and ready to go. I'm gonna turn this just a little bit so I can get a better angle to get it in. I'm gonna pour this batter right into this pan. This is gonna make a nice, thick, yummy pumpkin bread. I'm not leaving anything behind. It's just easier to scrape the bowl down here. And if my hands are clean, I wash them just before we started. We get impeccably clean hands and touch things. And now what I want to do is just spread this even a little bit, okay? Because it looks a little lumpy bumpy, right? And I want to get my nice cinnamon sugar on there. I'm just going to come in with my spatula. Spread this out evenly across the pan. And it will start to settle itself out in the oven as well as it starts to heat up. But I'm going to give it a little head start. And now on the top of this, I'm going to put some cinnamon sugar, right? So I've got a couple tablespoons of just plain granulated white sugar here. All right. And I'm going to add in a little bit of cinnamon. About, probably about a half a teaspoon's worth to start. And if I think it needs more, I'll add more. This is kind of one of those things you do by eye. And mix that up. You just want to get some of that cinnamon showing through on the sugar, right? Okay. So I'm just going to add just a little more cinnamon. I like cinnamon. One of my favorite spices. So I'll make this just a little hint stronger. And so you can see that color there, right? So this is great to do on top of muffins too. Things like a banana bread. So with the cinnamon sugar, what I'm going to do is come in and just sprinkle this across the top. All right, so I just want to give a nice coating. And what this will do is it's going to add some extra flavor, but it's also going to add a little bit of crunch on the top of the bread. So if the, the muffin top is your favorite part because of all the crunchy sugar, this is the same effect. Okay. And don't waste the extra cinnamon sugar. If you have some left over, if you mix up too much, save it, put it in a little container, and use it in your coffee or your tea. Okay. So that is our pumpkin bread. I said with a nice cinnamon sugar top. This is going to go into that 350 degree oven. It's going to take about 50 minutes, so almost an hour. Um, it might take a full hour. I will be checking this with a toothpick to see if it comes out clean, so no wet batter. Um, the other method to be able to tell when it's done it also is that when you press on the top of the bread after it's baked, and it starts, you start to smell it. You'll kind of know that it's almost done. So the house will fill up full of pumpkin smell. If I press on the top and it bounces right back up, same thing for muffins, it's done, right? If you press down on it and it leaves a little indent of your fingertips, it's not done. Put it back in and check it at that point every five minutes because you don't want to let this overbake and burn, okay? But that is the pumpkin bread. So this is going to go in the oven. So I'm going to stop recording so I can answer any questions.